And if you're not practicing it right now, I strongly urge you to only if your current strategy does not work. If your current strategy is, is stopping because you're always getting caught up on price, rate, fees, or arguments at the very beginning without, without compliance, go over that script, use that script. Um, it, will, it will help you get past that and actually create the actual sale. It's on the video, so just follow the link and then look at the notes section and it'll, it'll give you a link to, to where to get the script from. Um, I, it, it may ask you for an email address. NAF email is going to block it, so feel free to use a personal email and you'll get just a PDF copy. It's good to have available. And just a quick blurb as to why it does work. The, the resistance that you get up front of people calling in for like a TCF HELOC or they're going right into price because that's what we get over the phone call, right? We get that person that's always in a rush. They're calling you on their two minute break and they have absolutely no time in life. And, and that, that's what it's designed for is the person say, you know what, I, I, I know what I want. I know what I qualify for because those are the people that I actually qualify for are the people that give you the most resistance, right? It's the people that, that are fully compliant right off the get. Yeah, what do you need? I have, I have it all right now, actually. <laughs> I, I even got the appraisal. Why? Is because they've already been trying to do that process. And so we naturally gravitate towards those because they have le less resistance. And then we actually shine away from those who qualify because they have the most resistance. And so, and, and so that script is going to help you get through to those who have most resistance. And, and it's because they they are wired a certain way from their experience in dealing with consultants like us or salesmen like us, whether it was over the phone for a mortgage or in person for a car or anything in life. You know, if you walk through fucking freaking society and you see all these little kiosks trying to sell you something, all they're doing is getting advertised. You go on social media, everything's sponsored now. Everything's an advertisement trying to sell you. And so <clears throat> the script comes off in a different way. It basically just, uh, just distinguishes you as the, as the consultant versus a, a salesman. And I think that, that it goes over a little bit in depth of a powerful funnel question called net net. And if you guys really, if you guys are not using that, that concept currently right now in your first call, it's going to be hard to gain leverage for the close. Do you usually bring that up at the end of the first call, at the end, but after you've gone over how much you have in your bank, how much? Yeah, good question. So, you know, there, there's certain timing of, uh, of when to ask specific questions because they're sensitive information, right? You don't go into a conversation talking about checking and say, can you guys uh, put your phone on mute in the branches, please? And so there's certain timing of when to ask um, questions. And it, it, I, I think that the concept applies also to a certain timing of when you try and close. Right, it's it's um it's too it's too much right at, at the very beginning. So the, I would say the best way is just to to work work it down. So I, I get I I gain comfort from the prospect by naming things that they relate to. So if I see that they live on Myford, I'm saying, hey, your property here on Myford, this is where you live, right? Perfect. Looks like you last refinanced in 2014 with Chase. Do you remember that? Yeah. What did they write for you on the note? What's the note that they wrote? That's a conversation. And it's naming things that they remember, so it cues them into saying, oh, this guy knows about me. Now I can say, okay, cool, besides this mortgage uh, from 2014, what other debts do you have on your credit report that I don't see? You know, like credit cards. Let's start off with credit cards. Um, you know, and they're gonna say, oh, I got about four grand in credit card debt, but the way they answer it is gonna tell you on who you were talking to, right? They say, oh, I think, or oh, we have. Because if they tell you exactly what they have, that's a good sign that that's a person that you need to really talk to. And the concept of, of this script is to help you save time because my fear is that a lot of our time is, is wasted chasing deals that don't qualify or don't deserve your time to begin with. Because there are a lot of homeowners who genuinely need help and unfortunately they do have a guard to spit resistance right at the very front. So we're going to, you know, what, depending on our skill set, we're, they're either going to get help or they're going to get burned by a broker just based off price. And so this concept is going to help that consumer. It's going to help them make sure that they get the right advice, the right consultation, the right service, and they do good in this refinance. That's what it's about. It's not about price. And, um, and, and, and why I bring that up is because we, uh, we understand certain things behind the scenes that we feel it's necessary to explain to the consumer. 
right? Like we understand the limitations and, and we understand the market and we feel it's necessary to explain it to the consumer. But just like you said, there's certain timing of when to go over that information. I firmly believe that you should go over that information after you figure out the leverage and why this person needs you. Why do they need me is because I can map out a solution and create and design a plan for you to achieve a specific result. That result is not no fee. That result is not the lowest rate. That result is X amount of savings to improve your lifestyle, right? It's a different view of the same exact concept that what we do today. But because we have a license and we understand these specific guidelines and we see the energy within our, within our floor change, we might, we might give in and, and, and go into that crowd, right? Like, oh man, they, they said that the market's going to be slow. They said it's going to be a purchase market. Let them think that, right? That means more business for you because I know that these people who did buy and it's been a purchase market, it's been a purchase market. You guys understand that? We're closed off because we're in these walls. It's been a purchase market. My house has gained 150 equity over the last two years. This is real. Right. And if we understand that, what about these people that purchased six months ago? Who, who's going to flip them? I am. Right. Look at it that way. And so but but we look at it. it some of us will look at it and say, but yeah, they wrote a three and a half percent FHA six months ago. How am I going to beat them? Easy. TCF. Easy. See if that property's gained five percent value. I could drop your MI. I can help you skip a payment and get your escrow <laughs> refund and money in the bank. Right. The, this is why is, is, is if if we use too much of our understanding and look at it from kind of a, a, a different view, meaning, oh, this person has three and a half. You're not going to see the, the true reason why they need us. It's because they, they have a loan that they need to get out of as soon as possible. That's how you should look at it. Not, oh, they have a three and a half. Be the one to teach them why they should get out of this loan. Um, you know, streamlines may may come back in effect, but if you do have someone calling into a streamline, this is a good example, and they, and they have a three and a half percent, and say, you know what, I'm interested into a streamline refinance. You know from the very beginning that that person is not going to qualify for a streamline refinance, but the person who's going to close that application or close that prospect is the one who's not going to go over the guidelines right up front. It's going to be the person that finds out that Mr. and Mrs. Jones actually could use $2,000 in the bank right now because they're spending $500 a month to pay Chase that they owe $2,000 to. And so if you created a way to pay off that Chase of $2,000, because they're going to make the mortgage payment anyway. You guys agree? So if they did a deferral and kept that $2,000, paid off that Chase and created $500 in savings, what do you think Mr. and Mrs. Jones want to hear about? Right? That's a solution that we don't go into because we're too focused on the guidelines. Oh, well, you know, 90% CLTV is going to be your max. Oh, you don't qualify for a TCF. Open up your mind. You know, understand your product. This is going to tell you how to sell it. But if you don't know your avenues, you don't know, you know, what guidelines, what, what, what options you have, you're, you're burning up your time. You're burning up their time. Because this, this training is going to be about how do you gain compliance from those that you pitch? How do you make them react to, to what you need and get you the documents as soon as possible? Is that you have to pay attention to their tendencies. Um, initial tendencies meaning are they a busy type, right? And we, we understand who the busy type is. We under, kind of understand who's organized and who's not organized, right? By simple shit. By the way they respond, by, by the way they talk, by the way they answer things. And so if you feel that someone is not as organized, make it seem like in order for them to get the information, they need to have a few documents, like a most recent mortgage statement, a most recent pay stub. I need this to release the information because I need to make sure my numbers are buttoned up. But you're actually prepping them for about 25% of the steps that we need. You agree? Unless AUS is requiring a W-2. But most of the time, we can actually get away with that. But now they have 25 to 30 percent of the steps, so you now made it a little bit easier. So maybe even in the call, you ask them, say, you know what? Do you have you, right offhand um, the insurance amount that you pay on the house? Oh yeah, I got that right here. Okay, cool. Grab that. Right? Don't be afraid to ask them. Grab that. Make it seem like you need it to release the information. Next thing you know, these people have a full package in front of them. Right? Besides their W-2, but you can have them download that on P um, PDF at work. And say, hey, you know what, that stack of documents, go and send it over to me. I, I want to make sure you qualify first. 
That's how you gain compliance. That's how you make it seem easy. Um, on the flip side, but it, you know, these these strategies will work if depending on how you read the prospect. So if you if you went through the phone call and they went directly in the price, and I think that's important, right? Is because uh, you know what, Daniel, I got two and a half percent. I only want a free loan. I don't want to pay nothing. And I want you to help me. Perfect. I can. I'm going to show you how to do that. But first, let me make sure I can even move forward with this call. All right, I'm asked a few basic questions. Make sure this works. If it doesn't, hey, I'll point you in the right direction. I'll tell you where to get it. Who's going to fight that? And immediately, I got to find out what this guy's tie is to the sale. Would you agree? Say, okay, last time you refinanced, it looks like two years ago. Would you write a 30-year? Okay, cool. So with your current budget right now, what are you doing with your surplus? I'm moving right into it, but in a different way. Surplus, what do you mean? Surplus, your overage. You know, you have all these bills paid. What are you doing with your extra money? You put it in the bank, you're putting it towards the balance. I'm putting it towards the balance. Beautiful. Looks like you're set it up. It's definitely the best way to go about it. Is this something you plan on earn, owning long term? You know, like, oh, no, I'm going I'm to I'm sell this house in five years. Now I'm understanding his concept, right? Like, this guy is not going to pay this balance off. I'm, I'm not going to talk about certain programs with this guy. But he's, I'm gaining his, his emotional tie to the, to the process in itself. There's a need for it. And, and we can go about trying to sell you know, other shiny objects to this prospect, or we can go directly to why this person's doing it. Right? But, but again, we need to understand the programs or, or what have you. And so how do you gain compliance? When, when you go through the, the first call and then you leverage it to the second call, there's a few things that it's important you make happen. Number one is you never go over numbers if they are just bullying you for the numbers and saying, no, I need to know the price right now. I need to know the price right now. You will. You're going to know exactly the price you qualify for right now because I'm a direct conduit to the source. I can only give you the price as of today. I don't have any option. Here's, here's another thing is that I can't even move this far unless I know I can give you benefit. It looks like I can give you benefit. So you didn't waste your time. If you want to know rates, it's anywhere from two and a half to four and a half. Right by by law, I'm, I can't give you a quote unless I do the homework. And more than that, you don't want that information anyway. You want general information. You could just turn on the radio. I'm going to give you something custom fit and make sure you even qualify for the process. Otherwise, you're spending money for no reason. You're going to burn four weeks of your time of headache back and forth. Paint the picture. This is the reason why they don't want to do a refinance because they had that experience, right? So be the one and be like, oh man, this guy fucking he just read my mind. He just explained why I don't want to do a refinance and yeah, I like this guy. So there's a few things that you guys want to keep in mind of in setting up the second call is um, making sure that depending on, on, how you're, on how they answered the questions of expenses, if that person really is the decision maker, you need to identify who the decision maker is. And I can't stress this enough, the decision maker, even if, it does, even if they say it's not, it's the person who sends the bills out at the end of the month. They're the one who has the, the finger on the button, if you will. And even if they go through a filter like a husband or a spouse, don't pay no mind to that. It just means that th that, that person who has the finger on the button is, is the influencer at the end of the day. So they're the one. So it's important to have them available because you're, you need to have your words heard by them. They're going, to, they're going to somehow attach the benefit to the numbers that they see at the end of the month and you want to be the person that they think of, okay? So after you identify who the actual person who handles the bills are, and sometimes you're going to run into foreign situations like, oh no, we have different bank accounts, right? Something, it's rare, but it happens. Or, you know, we both sit down at the table and handle our bills. Perfect. I need this other person ready. What time are they going to be available? Now they're going to say, oh, you know what, I, I don't get home until 7 or whatever. You have to remember you have the ability to do a conference call. So I, I don't need you guys to be at the same place. I can call you back in an hour. I just need to know you guys can be available 10 minutes. The only reason why I need that person on the phone is because these numbers have to be accurate to your situation. Otherwise, it's general information. Sounds nice, right? So, okay, cool. They're going to be available in 10 minutes. And when you open up into from transition from the first to the second call, it has to be in a, different from like a pitch call. So if your current pitch call right now is saying, hey, I got the options ready for you. Do you have a pen and paper? If you have it that way, you, it, whether you like it or not, you're setting them up for, oh, I'm not going to say yes right now. 
or I'm going to tell them I got to think about it, right? You're actually setting them up for that. Whereas if you, if you, if you revise your approach, so if you revise the approach instead of saying, Hey, um, I got a few options. Do you have a pen and paper handy? Enter into the conversation like this. Hey, you know what? I know I'm a little bit early or I'm a little bit behind on our, on our, uh, on our appointment, but I was actually going through the numbers right now to release it to you. And I came across an idea. I want to run it by you. You know what? Is Stan available or is Stacy available? Let me conference her in real quick. Okay, cool. Hey, Stacy, you know, I had a chance to speak with Stan. You know, I got him on the line and I was going through some options with you. I want to confirm it with you. And, and, and why you're opening it up that way is because it becomes more or less like, hey, I need something from you real quick. And, and, and you, you, they're going to get what they want, which is the information. You guys understand that? And so but what you, why you're doing it that way is because you're gaining their attention right away. And it's not going to be a biased attention. It's not going to be a guarded attention. It's going to be absolute attention. And you need them in that mindset because you are going to dramatically improve their lives, right? You're going to show them a way to handle all these things that are stressing them out, that are actually causing issues within their family. This is something that, that you can't do with a rate or payment, but this is something that you can do by mapping out a solution because we understand numbers better than they do. We understand how this mortgage game works better than they do. So that's how you help them, right? And so when you, when you open up your second call by saying, hey, you know, I got an idea. I want to run it by you real quick. You go over all of the emotional ties you actually happen on the first. That's why I say is the sale actually happens on the first call. So all the things that they told you, like, hey, I, I only have $500 in my bank account, you want to bring that up. But how do you bring it up, Daniel? This is how. Hey, you know what you mentioned on our last call? You have about $500 in the bank checking and savings, and you're actually pulling from that account sometimes. It concerned me because after looking at your credit report, you've got about $4,000 or $5,000 in debt. Now, I know you got this $2,000 credit card. What's the payment you send on this account? Very important to ask because it's usually not the minimum payment, right? So you might have a $2,000 credit card, but the payment's 25 bucks. You have a choice. You can use that $25 savings or you can find out that they actually send 100 bucks. Make sense? Now you're, you're creating savings. It's just the wordplay. That's it. Um, and you know, it concerns me because you have this credit card debt and you're spending about $100. You actually don't have anything left to yourself. Now, you did mention at the age of 58, you guys do plan to retire here. And before your income changes in seven years, I think that we can create a stepping stone for you. Let me show you what I mean. Now, this is the pitch, right? Let me show you what I mean. I can, I can show you how to create a couple hundred dollars in monthly savings, improve your FICO, create more cash flow so you can build to that 500. More importantly, without this extra revolving debt, you're not wasting your income as high as it is right now. And I'm, I'm adding that in because they plan to retire in this house, right? As much as it is right now to pay off the debts you don't need in retirement. So that this time in six months or 12 months, we can relook at your situation and help you again. So now it just becomes more like a plan. It's not a pitch. You guys get where I'm getting at? And, and when, what you're looking for is for them to agree. That means they're willing to buy, but it's just a different approach. It's not saying, which one do you want? Option one or option two? Now it's a fucking buy. They're going to feel like, fuck, I don't know. What if I go with option two? It's the wrong choice, right? What's this lenders option one and two? I feel like I got options now because we triggered that emotion. Hey, I got a couple options for you. Boom. You're just an option. Make sense? It, 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 it's an unfortunate truth, but, we, but that's just the way that, that we're perceived right now. And instead, if we take away the choice of an option, but more of a plan, because you touched on all these sensitive parts with the decision maker on the phone, they now know that you are speaking to them. They now know that you know your shit. So even if they don't buy on that call and they talk, it's going to be the decision maker saying, no, yeah, I mean, this actually makes sense. No, you should probably give this guy a call or, yeah, you know what, go ahead and check these other companies, but remember this guy, right? I want to, I want to tell you guys right now in disclosure, you know, it's, uh, 
the process is strong, the strategy is strong, but you're still going to miss some. You know, it's reality. It's just sales. So there's going to be times where you don't flip them, but you're going to have a very strong chance of flipping them on that, on that second call. Um, if you if you understand this concept and kind of use these techniques, and um, and now at, by going over going over kind of the emotional ties and, and sprinkling it into your to your call, you're you're now going to go over the rate and fees, right? The the nervous question. This is the question the that has us kind of stutter in a sense, right? Anyone here, even myself, when you go over a fee, you go over a hard issue. Your your tone changes, your mentality changes. It's natural. But how do you go over it here? The best way, in my experience, is is saying, and I've seen the experience of other closers as well, and they they agree, is that you go into it by payment, by selling payment by itself. And so, if you find out that with your payment deferral and your escrow refund, they can wipe out that two thousand dollar credit card that they save a hundred bucks. Write that down. And so, if their their mortgage is a thousand bucks and they got $200 in credit cards that you could pay off through escrow refund or pay, or the 2000 back from escrow plus the skip payment plus escrow refund, get creative, right? Even if it's a rate term refinance, then um, then say, okay, I got about $1,200. Say, I can bring your total payment right now from 1200 down to about 800 bucks, right? I've turned two into $400 in savings. And same concept goes if you go $25 savings to 100 bucks in savings, whatever. It's the same concept. And then they're going to ask, well, my $1,200, my mortgage payment is 1000 No, I get that. But since you're going to make your mortgage payment anyway, because that's your alternative is if you don't do a refinance, since you're, since you're going to make that mortgage payment anyway, use it here because you're going to get a freed up payment, a freed up deferral, and an escrow refund, right? Or what have you, or, or, escrow, or escrow back. And if you use it this way, you can actually create more savings. And now it's just that aha moment. Oh, yeah, makes sense. Now it's like a strategy in itself. It becomes a plan, right? It's not a sale. It's not a pitch. It's not a close. And it, if, you, if you sell it by, by payment in itself, you have them, in essence, buy into the payment initially, right? They've already made the decision. Oh, yeah, 400 To be honest, within that millisecond, they've already found ways to spend that 400 Believe it or not, right? Like, oh, 400, fuck, that, that takes care of the car payment. Do you guys agree? Mm -hmm. That's how you got to remind them, too. That becomes the anchor. It, just, it, it seemed like, oh, you know what? That's actually as much as you send on the car payment. Whatever. And move on. Just like, hey, it's just no biggie, right? But let them resonate with that. And say, by default, you're actually going to save more money, build up your savings, increase your FICO, and be in better position to hold this house down for five years that you plan to own it. Or hold this house down in five years when your income changes. Make sense? Now it's helping you get past, get to the next stage. And, and I think that personalization comes beyond rate and fees. So you sell payment and say, I could do this payment with no lender fee, basically $16.29. But initially what they hear is no fees. Make sense? No lender fee. In other words, you're giving them a payment $16.29. I'm not giving them the rate. I'm not giving them the loan balance. I'm not giving you nothing but the payment. I say, I can get your payment here with no lender fee. I can get your payment here with no appraisal fee. Or you can use your deferred payment instead of pay off these credit cards and cover the cost in itself because you're going to get a deferred payment anyway. And you can get your payment down here. Now, here's my recommendation. Since you're going to refinance in 6 to 12 months anyway, just, you know what, build it into the rate. Because you're, you're still saving on the lower monthly payment. Your payment is here, right? And, and, and when they get attached to that payment, they're going to ask you for the rate. Well, the rate's at four, three eighths. Oh, Daniel, that's, that's way higher than three and a half. No, I understand that. But at the end of the day, what we're looking at is the big picture. Would you agree? It's not the interest rate. The bottom line is a four, $400 savings right now to create an avenue for you to get to a position where you can demand savings. Your alternative is to continue spending $400 more than you have. Your, your alternative is to continue using $400 of your current cash flow to put towards these debts. Or you could take that extra $400 and start improving your life because your goal, what you shared with me, is that you want to retire here. Or you want to sell this house in five years. Whatever, whatever applies. Does that make sense? So you're still going to go through objections, right? But you're going to go through it in a different way. And, and it's a different way of, of 
of understanding where their mindset is. So now that they have an option with no lender fee or they have an option with no fees at all, whatever the options are that you provided, it's not a rate anymore, right? It's not saying you can get four and a half with 3,600 in lender credit. You're basically, you're getting this payment. So they're gonna tie to the payment and they're gonna say, you know what, I think let's go with this one. Got it. So I do need to make sure that you qualify first. Those documents you have in front of you, send them over to me right now. It'll take me less than an hour to make sure that you have a bridge across. I want, to protect, I want to make sure you're protected first, and if so, I'll show you how to lock the loan and get an appraiser out to your house, right? <clears throat> and uh, something I didn't cover yet on Friday is that e-consent is a gauge of how, how powerful your conversation was. Believe that. If they consent right away, it's a good sign. Like, you got, you got strong bond with this person. If they don't consent, it means you miss something. It means that you're dealing with someone of a different nature, right? Probably not tech savvy. It's okay. Don't get mad at them or disregard them. Just understand where to keep them, right? It's probably not the person you should dedicate your first two hours of the day working up that pitch that we know he's going to buy because that's two hours gone that you could have helped Sam and Sue in Washington. Make sense? It's just a little bit better use of your time. And uh, time management is, is key. It's important of course, and, and I'll, I'll cover that in another one. But uh, does that make sense just to get compliance from the prospect? Okay, that's how you make them engage. Otherwise, if you're setting up your second call right now saying, hey, I got a couple options, grab a pen and paper, you're actually setting them on guard. I never tell them grab a pen and paper. To be honest with you, same, in my opinion, I never give them my phone number at the very beginning. I tell them, hey, I'm emailing you right now, please reply back to confirm you got my email. Why is because I'm getting engagement. I'm making sure I'm not in their spam folder, right? At the end of my first call, I'm getting consent to sending them a text. Hey, do you mind if I text you when this is ready? Yes, now I got their authorization. Now I got an open tie to them besides their, their phone. But then agents go, I don't like to give agents my cell phone number. Bro, our technology is so advanced right now, you can block that number from calling you again. Don't worry, they're not gonna TMZ you. They're not gonna, they're not gonna stalk you. That's your money, right? You have a phone because you make money, so make money with your phone. Simple as that. Um, but another concept that, that I, I'm also going to go into is, um, is taking a little bit more advantage of social media. And I think all of us have an opportunity to do that because I've had some experience in building up this brand here. And it's, it's really about going over insight that only we know, right? Like financial advice, um, the average consumer's credit score is at 760, you could do this to help your FICO score. Whatever that you find useful and it's kind of that insider knowledge, whether you use your personal um, brand or you, you create some sort of, of brand yourself, um, as long as you're not pitching rate or fees, there's, there's no compliance break. Does that make sense? So I could be just the guy that, hey, I just got uh, the life plan or whatever, just whatever name you come up with and say, hey, this is actually how, in my experience, this is how I've seen FICO affect people, right? This is, in my experience, this is how I see the current financial system. Everyone's checked the check, but did you know if you did this, you can open up savings? As long as you're not pitching rate, payment, or fees, right? You're just giving awareness. You're just giving advice. I think that's more attractive than, than an advertisement that says I can drop your rate because everyone else is doing it. And I think if you build up that, that the power of social media is just the ability to share and build a following, right? So if, if, if Sue um, on Facebook at 50 forwards it over to you know, her little network of manufactured homes, now you've got connection to them. But a better connection than a phone or an email, you have a connection to their messenger on Facebook, right? Or their messenger on Instagram. And so I think that that's gonna play a role. And, and some of us right now at this table looking at it like, oh, fucking never do social media. It, that, you gotta go to where the attention is. And unfortunately right now the attention is in social media. That's where it's at. And if you can find a way to adapt what you do for a living or what your passion is to social media, at very least you'll learn a lot about yourself. You'll learn a lot about your independence. You'll learn a lot whether or not you're meant for this, right? You'll learn a lot about the delivery and the message. You'll learn about what's applicable. And what's applicable today is people are, don't look at TV anymore. They'll look at TV, but they're always on their phone. And if I can get in front of a prospect's phone and find out how I can get their attention and it ultimately leads to a sale, well, that's separate, right? But first, I'm bringing them value. 
And all I'm bringing you is just information that you need to know whether you, you're going to buy a home, you own a home, you're going to retire, you don't retire, whatever. This information is going to apply to you. And, and I think that the reason why I bring that up is because that's how you win on the second call is you're, bring, you're coming in with just advice, right? It's like, hey, you know what? I was putting the numbers together. I'm going to release it for you. I came across an idea and I just want to run it by you real quick. Now it's just advice, right? It's like, you know, I was putting this option. You did mention in your first call all these pressure points. Because of that, I have this option. I can take your total payment from here to here with no lender fee or from here to here with no appraisal. My recommendation is that you go with the no appraisal. Or my recommendation is that you go with this payment because it frees up the 400, right? And, and now, now, now you get to ask them, what do you think? Oh, you know what, Daniel? No, I like the one with no, no, no lender fee. Okay, I got it. And I knew you'd say that and that's why I wanted to get your feedback. Here's what we do first before I can help you lock in the loan. Now it's a sale, it just, it just happened. Does that make sense? It's not, it's, it's not them saying, yeah, let me, give me, let me get option number one and two. So I hope that makes sense. I know it, um, it, it goes a little bit in depth, but I think that, that's probably how to gain the compliance from the second call and make them react in sending the documents. Now, um, one also thing that I don't say is that they're locked. I'll say, you know, depending on how fast you can get these documents, I can reserve the request for you, but the reserve only lasts 24 hours or you lose your reservation. In other words, I need these documents by tomorrow morning. Now, fortunately, you just got home or fortunately, you get home at about five. You think you set aside 10 minutes to gather these documents, bring it into, get, bring it into work with you at, at 10 in the morning tomorrow or, or whatever, or when you go back into work tomorrow morning. Yeah, sure. Okay, cool. What I'll do is set a reservation. I got to read a lock script for you, right? Just to make sure that we get a timestamp. Um, but but if you if if you let me confirm you're eligible to proceed within the 24 hours, you got nothing to lose. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll make sure that happens. And why that concept works is because you're setting something that they could lose, and that's a little bit more powerful than than saying, "Hey, you're locked. You're all set. Just please send me these documents. Please, please, please." It's a little bit more powerful because they 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 attach it to if they don't get these documents, they're going to lose something, and it has to do they're going to lose. <laughs> everything that they talked about in that first call and they have to feel that they have to start the process all over again, right? Like, oh man, I don't want to go through that again. Okay, cool. Let me go and get you these documents by 10 a.m. tomorrow. Now you're going to have some times where you can only pitch one person and it's important that you do your best in finding out whether or not that one person is capable of making a decision, but it's a, it's a tricky way, right? You can't necessarily, hey, are you capable to make a decision? That's an awkward question. You're going to offend them. We might hang up on you. And so um, a way to do it is saying, okay, cool. Um, there are a few documents I need you to verify. Do you know where this document is, this document, and this document is at home? If he says, oh, yeah, my wife can get it, then you don't go over any of the information with the wife. If you choose and if you need to go over it with him, make sure you call the wife right after. And you have to do it again. Because the person who knows where those documents are are going to react based on how you leave them. Right? So if you pitch, if you spend some time pitching the husband who now has to reiterate and then tell the wife to go get these documents, you're leaving it up to him to make your sale. You're leaving it up to him to justify the last hour and a half you took with this guy. Make sense? You're leaving it up to him to justify the time you spent working up the proposal, working up the disclosures, working up the lock. You've got disclosures in it, lock desk in it, sales managers in it right? Everyone's focused. So think of it that way and you won't necessarily leave everything up to just that person. Do your job and, and go the extra mile and make sure the other person's engaged. Cool. Any questions so far? No, it's pretty straight. <laughs> hey, you guys. It, yeah, we're good. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so again, the, the video uh, on Friday is real strong. I would, I would recommend um, checking it out when you guys get a chance. It's, uh, it's available on that link that I emailed out to you. And let me know your input as well. What I'm hearing mostly is just the, just the wordplay and the power of, of, of not only the script of opening up the call, but also the simple questions like net-net, simple questions of, of, of finding out why the surplus or, or the, the deficit is important. And if you guys aren't, aren't, aren't using those words in your vocabulary right now, figure out how. Because just like a business, a home is somewhat of a business, right? It needs X amount of money to operate. And, and the, the owners of that business are your, your clients. 
And so when you think about it this way, you figure out, okay, well, when, what's important to this person is their surplus or their net. What's their surplus? Their surplus is the extra cash flow they have. You're going to realize that over 80% of the people you talk to don't have a surplus. It's a break even or sometimes it's a deficit, right? When you are able to understand that, you, you can then conform your conversation in a different way that's applicable to that surplus or that deficit. You have to stick around there and make sure you, you hover around that topic um, more so than why they should buy from you or, or more so than, you know, I have this rate, I have this payment. Look at my reviews on Better Business Bureau. Does that make sense? Okay. I have a question for yep. you. How do you deal kind of like with that client that's kind of like, I'm not going to give you this unless I get that. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, uh, I'm not going to do business with you unless I get that. You know, kind of like the demanding, demanding. And you're, sure. I mean, you obviously want his business, but you also feel like it's going to be a jerk and this is how it's going to be throughout the loan process. Do you really want to deal with somebody like that? Yes, yeah, because that's the person that actually qualifies for your product. Yeah. You know, they're the ones who qualify. So you, the best way to do it is to, is to understand why he's doing it, okay. right? So understand that why he's doing it is because um, he's went through the process. He's very, he's very experienced, right? It's not the person that you need to fluff and use a certain tone with, right? Like, uh, hey, you, know, you, don't, you don't approach him that way. You don't ask him bullshit questions like, how's your day? You know, you don't ask him bullshit questions of like, oh, why'd you choose that? You know, don't judge him. He's more of an authority level. And so treat them as such. Whereas if you're having a conversation with the owners of the company right now, you treat them, you treat it a different way. You'd listen more than you speak, right? And so how you speak to them is that you, you hear what he's talking about and say, hey, you know what? I don't want to talk to you unless I can get three and a half. Perfect. I know in my head, I can get him three and a half all day on a 10 year fix. Do you agree? I get him a three and a half on a buy down on 30 year. That's what I'm hearing. So if he's rate sensitive, I, I'm hearing that. But I'm not letting it stop me and I'm not letting myself regurgitate underwriting guidelines to him right now because it's too soon. I don't want to go in for that kiss yet, right? And so when you, when you figure out like, okay, cool, that this guy's only looking for 3.5% and then I want to find out when's the last time you looked at your credit report. And this is going to gauge if he's shopping. This is going to gauge of how much he knows. And he's going to say, oh, I looked at it yesterday. Perfect. How? You got to go how? Because they might think karma. Credit karma is their credit report, right? They might think the Discover credit card bill that said their credit score is their credit report. You have to ask how. So, oh, you know what? I applied for a refinance yesterday. Cool. Who'd you go with? And then, and then you're going to get an idea of their conversation. I went with Loan Depot or I went with Cash Call. Okay, cool. Is there a reason why you didn't pick? Why you didn't move on it? Oh, yeah, you know what? I'm moving on it. I'm setting up the documents and, and I'm locking in with them today. All right? It's going to get in, give you an idea of, of how committed they are. And let's say if they say that they are going to the loan, right? So, you know what? I'm shopping right now. Would you guys agree that's more of a common response? I'm shopping? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, perfect. Good, good thing that you are shopping because you, you see the way the market's going right now. It's unpredictable. Here's the good news is that we all work for the same sources, which is Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, FHA, or VA. Do you know which loan you're applying for? And say, oh, it's, it's this loan or whatever. Okay, perfect. The, the, only, the only advantage I can bring you is that I'm a direct conduit to the source. So I'm a portfolio lender, we're out of Orange County, but here's the advantage I can bring you. I don't have broker points or broker fees. More importantly is I can't even engage with you unless I can help you, right? So if you're looking to save your time and make sure you're getting clear black and white information, I'm actually who you wanna to talk to. But here's the thing though, is that I can only move forward with this call to, if, if I can help build any benefits. So let me ask you, besides this mortgage that you wrote in 2014 with Chase, what other debts do you have? And you go right into the conversation. You get know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think that the key thing in, in that answer is that I'm not giving in to what he, I'm not letting him control the conversation. Mm -hmm. Although it seems like, oh man, how am I gonna win control of this conversation? Easy, you just have to make sure you, you apply to the way he's communicating with you. Right, so if he's communicating with you and he's demanding, demanding, make him feel like, yeah, cool, no worries. You're actually in the right place. Right? Make him feel invited, whereas our competitors are gonna come back demanding with him as well. Or they're gonna say some shit that's gonna end the phone conversation. No, oh yeah, our lowest rate's four and a half. Okay, bye. <clears throat> right? Mm -hmm. It's because we're not we're not getting creative enough to say, yeah, I got two and a half percent fix right now. And I do. Right? Fifteen, fifteen year fix or, or, or a lower term and they can buy it down but I'm not going over that details right away. 
because I, I, I've known from experience that it doesn't come down to the rate or fees. It comes down to that one, one reason or one emotional tie to the process, and that's the result. Okay. Makes sense? Yeah. Well, any other questions? Oh, I just want a quick question. This is a Jason and Nova. I just want to know your experience with the, uh, the takeaway and, okay. and what um, circumstances where you would use that strategy. Yeah, definitely. So um, when you when you get approved for your from your SM, right? And they say they approve you for three thousand dollars in lender credit. What I would do is say is I would sell them on half that. So I would sell them on no lender fee of sixteen twenty nine. See if I could sell them on that. If I don't, then I, I bring it in. I bring in the extra LC and say, hey, you know what? I if I can get it to three thousand, do I have your approval to move forward right now? My manager is going to ask me for a full file if he approves to you know, double your lender credit. So I'm going to have to answer him. Can I have these documents by tomorrow morning? I'll make it three grand. You already knew going in, you can go up to three grand. Make sense? So that's more of a takeaway. On the flip side, let's say you sell them at 1629, right? And you know, you can go to three grand, but you want this guy to comply or you want this girl to comply. You want them to react right now. And they're giving you every reason why not to. That's a good way to take away and say, hey, you know what? Here's the good, good news. If you can get this to me by tomorrow morning, I'll see what I can do about getting it three grand. If not, then it's going to be 1629 unless the market worsens and the market's been worsening over the last month. It's your call. I want to help you, but I can only move as fast as you let me. Right? They'll react differently that way because they perceive it differently. But ultimately, you already knew you can go up to that high. The problem is that we want to go high, we get approved for low, and then we go, ah, oh. <laughs> we, we actually are anchoring ourselves going in because we believed that it needed this much lender credit. We believed so much that if we didn't knock out every penny of that lender fee, that there's no way this guy's going to buy, right? That's what it, our challenge is. And the takeaway is how you present it and, and ultimately like saying a reservation, that's a takeaway. Right, I can reserve this for you for 24 hours, but if you don't prove you're eligible to move forward, this reservation expires. That's a takeaway. Um, and and finally, does that answer your question, Jason? Yeah, yeah, kind of. I was just uh, more so looking for like the hard takeaway and when you would use that. Be like, you know what? It's, this is just. I just don't think we're we're on the same page here. I can get move forward. Need or need you to move forward, but um, you know I. Like more like the hard takeaway, be like this isn't going to be available in, in X amount of time. More so, like rather than the incentivize what you're talking about. I just didn't know if you had any experience with that. I know some. I hear some people use it on board. I I don't really because it's confrontational in my opinion. But yeah. Can you give me an board. example? Can you give me an example of when that would come up? So most of the time, a lot of times when there's rate shoppers calling around and they're just hammering you, hammering you, you're giving them like an overcoming objection after objection, and they really do want the rate. Um, and you pull a takeaway there. I've seen it work on some of these guys and be like, fine, you can pull my credit and then they move forward. But it was only after 15 minutes of arguing and then be like, you know what, you know, I'm a, we're a reputable lender. I have integrity. I'm not going to quote you based upon these, this information you're giving me. I need to your full application. And then I'd be like, maybe we're not the lender for you. And then rather than that guy disconnect, he's like, all right. And then he, he finally gives it. Good question. So I think, yeah, definitely. So it's a good question because it really depends on how that phone call is started. It's like the expectation that you set up on the first call. If you immediately start hovering around price and that prospect keeps focusing on price, like they keep saying words like we got the lowest rate, we got the lowest fee, I'm going to call you back and I'm going to go over our lowest rate. They're actually they're actually anch they're ac they're anchoring that that thought to that to that communication or that call meaning that they're always expecting a lower rate is because that the consultant is actually focused on, they keep saying lower rate. They're the ones setting it up that way. Whereas like this script and this technique is nothing about rates, nothing about you know um, price of, of the loan. It's about actually creating a solution. So to answer your, to answer your question, how, how to avoid that rate fee shopper is there was, they're, all, they're all rate fee shoppers. All consumers are fee shoppers. That's, that's the bottom line. But how do we get through them a little bit more powerful is that you, you, you start focusing on things that are not rate and fees. So you start focusing on the big picture of how it actually helps them. The result helps them. Yeah, that rate will give them $100. But talk about how that $100 affects them. 
What does that $100 do to their current life, their current surplus, their current deficit? What does that $100 or this refinance do long term? Where will they be in six months to 12 months from now? What, what will they do if they don't have you? So actually talk about what actually talk about the fear of not buying versus buying. Does that make sense? What will happen if they don't buy? It should be the topic, not yeah. why they should buy. Yeah, no, that's a good strategy. Yeah, but ultimately you're you're bringing up the things that 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 why the scripts devised, why the, these techniques are helpful. So please check out more content on on the YouTube and and check out any of the highlights. Anything that you have any questions on, feel free to hit me directly. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Appreciate you guys. Thank you.